Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Paulina. Hey, uh, where are you calling from? Uh, well, um, we are based in Hong Kong. We are a Hong Kong company. And right now, I'm in the Morocco office, uh, but our headquarters are in Hong Kong and other offices are across uh, Southeast Asia. So typically China, India, and uh, Vietnam. So do you live in Hong Kong yourself? Yes, yes. I've been living in Hong Kong for 10 years now. So it has been a while. Oh, very nice. I just recently went to Global Sources Summit, but we didn't leave the airport basically <laughs> because of the situation in the Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah, the protest. Yeah, I saw your video. It's lovely. I, I like it. Yeah, it was a great event, actually. But it was a little bit awkward because the hotel was connected to the airport and then we wouldn't yes. leave. <laughs> so it was like, you know, locked at the airport and the hotel for, for a couple of days. <laughs> was yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a bit weird for Hong Kong. You know, we never faced that. Uh, although, you know, Hong Kong remains very safe. Um, you know, people are protesting. It might seem a bit violent in uh, the media. But actually, the you know the daily life is just fine. Yeah, I figured it's usually how the media does it. They they just show you the worst moment of the day. Just focus on one street, but Hong Kong is bigger than that, so it's yeah, fine. Yeah, that's right. So where are you originally from? If you say only ten years, you live in Hong Kong. Um, I'm from Morocco, so that one of the reasons uh, we have an office here in Morocco as well. Uh, but I'm originally from uh, from Morocco, so I. Uh, I was uh, born here, raised here, and then I went to, to France for studies, and then from, stand, from France went to, uh, to Hong Kong for work. So since 2010, I've been uh, living and working in Hong Kong. Hmm, very cool. Let me share my screen with you. I was checking sure. your uh, LinkedIn profile, and yeah. I see that you are a founder of Tetra Inspection, right? So Correct. that's... That's very relevant type of business for us Amazon sellers. Uh, Correct, yes. I am currently working with another inspection company, so I have a lot of experience on... Which one work. is it? Um, you want me to announce that, like, uh, publicly? <laughs> Up to you. I have no... <laughs> no yeah, they used to be called Trigo Inspection, and then they renamed themselves. So what? it's Trigo. Anyway, I'll show you a, um, on my site, I actually have a list of um, different services for Amazon sellers. And one of the categories is the inspection services. So I just put a few there. Let me check. I was the first to reach out to you. I think we are part of your, uh, part okay. of the list. No, actually, here we are only sure. three of them. No, only three of them I added so far. So there is space for us still. There one. is a lot of space right here with the empty space waiting for you to be filled in. Right. This list is not extensive because it's all based yeah. on me personally reviewing each of them. So it's pretty yes. time consuming thing and it's not my core business. So I just. Right. Whenever I test some something, some service or an app, I add it there. So right now we have over 200 things listed over there. Amazing. And yeah, and the one that I work with is renamed now to Efficient. They used to be called mm -hmm. Trigo Inspection. So it's like ChinaQualityCheck.com. Okay. Um, I like it that I just email them and they basically do everything for me. They contact the sourcing agent, they go to the factory, they just send me the report and then it's all done, you know. So. Yeah. I like That's that it's exactly a little bit hands off. Yeah, so your process works pretty much the same then? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. Well, there are two ways uh, for booking an inspection. The, the, the first one is you email us, you know, your, your factory address, the contact person, and, um, and, and, and any specific requirement you might have. And then we take over. We have a coordination team. Uh, they will call your sourcing agent, your factory, and then uh, they will schedule an inspection. So, um, and we keep calling, you know, sometimes, you know, we call the factory and they will say, we don't know when the production will be ready. So, so we, we just keep calling and doing the follow up till we schedule the inspection date. And everything is automatic. So um, everything runs through um, a system. So whenever there is a progress, like if the inspection is scheduled, we know that the when is the inspection date. 
it will just send you a notification. So it automatically it pops up in your email or on your app, and you will know where exactly where when we will be going. Um, so th that you know, this I would call it like the traditional way. You send us the email, and then we do the follow up till you receive your inspection report. Uh, the other way is you just log in on your account, and then you book an inspection online. You pay online, and then you receive the inspection report done. Hmm. So you just input all the uh, the information, like the factory address, the contact person. Uh, if you have any other like specific requirement, probably the pictures or dimensions or whatsoever, then uh, and then you know we, we take it from there. What specific about us is, uh, or special about us is, we have. Uh, we work a lot with Amazon sellers, and we have, uh, you know, we probably understand better their needs compared to the other uh, competitors. So we have a, if you go to the services um, section, there is um, a special service for Amazon sellers, uh, Amazon FBA inspection. Oh, that's very interesting. All right. Yeah, and then we we focus more, you know, obviously the. The checking the quantity and the quality is a big part of it, uh, but also we um, we will look into the details in terms of the labeling, dimensions, and uh, and all the FBA requirements. So uh, we have set up like an inspection protocol that's really specific to their needs. Hmm. You know, I had this other. Um, so on my site, I have another article which is about the inspection services. And when I was writing it, I was suggesting to people that they should work with an inspection company that is located not far from their manufacturer. So right. I, I saw that article, yes. Yeah, and I provided a lot of different sample um, inspection sample reports. So I see here that you have one as well. And for me, it was most interesting. We don't have to look at the article, but... Uh, most interesting part is to actually look at the sample report and see like what am I gonna get like what am I gonna see if, yeah. if it's the first Very time. Very important. Yeah, yeah, um, that, that, yeah. That's what you will receive. So makes sense to review it first before committing on the, the inspection. Okay, so basically you give a recommendation whether to pass or not to pass the inspection, right? By saying conform and non-conform. Yeah. So, well, basically what we do is we send an inspector who, like, for example, if we are inspecting furniture, so it will be a furniture inspector, not like a general general inspector. So he will go there and then uh, based on, like, for example, we use HVL standard uh, for sampling plan. Um, and then from the inspection, we will find uh, some defective, some non-conformities. And then our role as third party, we are not allowed to say this, you know, this will be, you know, is approved to ship or not approved to ship. For us, we go to the factory and then we report all the finding, like we take a, a, a live picture of what happening and then we send it to the client. And it's up to him to decide. You know, some clients, although there, there are some non conformities they will still decide to ship or um, negotiate um, some, like some discount or, or, uh, whatsoever so we our job is to check what is happening give the clients the tools to decide to make like a well thought decision and that that basically our job as a third party and what about your locations like do you have branches all across china like where's your main branch well for, for our main you know china is 45 percent of our business the other 65% is scattered across uh, 19 countries. So we, are, we have presence in 19 countries. Well, and the good thing about us is, unlike other inspection uh, companies, uh, we never charge uh, transportation or, or uh, like food or extra hours or, or a weekend, uh, you know, extra charges whatsoever. It's, you know, we have managed to have like a network and a presence in the main manufacturing hubs in China and other countries. So we have inspectors in Ningbo, Shenzhen, Guangzhou. In, in, in every manufacturing hub, we have a presence. So, so for us, the traveling cost is, is not a big part of, um, of our like, cost st structure somehow. So that's why we, what we offer to the client is an all-inclusive pricing. So you don't have to think about, like, if, if they book an inspection in Mongolia or an inspection in Shenzhen, 
is going to cost them the same. And if it happened that we don't have an inspector, it's up to us to take this risk. So we, we like to make it simple. It's, it's easier for the client to budget. Like when, like for example, an Amazon seller, when, when he's deciding uh, like to buy 2,000 pieces or 3,000 pieces from a manufacturer, he already how much it will cost him for quality, uh, like quality control. So it doesn't, it's not like, you know, because he has to comment on everything way before. And then only at the time of the inspection, he will find them that, well, he has to pay, like, I don't know, like $200 for, for the inspection. But at the end of the day, he'll be paying like $300 because there is an, an extra $100 for, for transportation. For us, it's simple. So he knows he's buying from China, that the cost of the inspection is fixed. No matter it's Shenzhen or any other city, it's, 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 it's always the same. Hmm. It's interesting. I'll share with you a screen again. Let me see. So I opened that same article I was mentioning. So like yeah. a, another somebody a report. <laughs> so <laughs> this. To get that. Yeah. So how does the actual inspection look like? When does the factory keep producing something, and in the same place they are doing the inspection? Like, how does does it work? Like, do you take the goods and ship it somewhere else for inspection? Like, how does it work in your company? We, we go to the factory where the goods are manufactured. And that's what we always recommend our client to do. Um, some clients or some uh, inspection companies, they do it in some what they call warehouse or platforms. And we, we don't really recommend that because when we do the inspection at the factory, uh, if there is anything wrong with the quality, they can still fix it. The production lines, it's, you know, close where the inspection is. Uh, they can reproduce uh, some batches and then replace it and then still catch the shipments. Uh, unlike other, uh, you know, in other scenarios or in other cases where they ship it to, to other inspection platforms, if anything wrong, the factory become very reluctant to take it back and rework. So, so that's why we always recommend to, 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 to inspect where the goods are produced. And we have, as I said, you know, we have the network to go wherever the factory is, no matter in China or other countries where we are. And yeah, that an example of the report when we were doing the inspection, we found that we found out uh, the factory was, um, was planning to ship some um, some good that pr were produced for Mark and Spencer, and then they just covered the logo and they sell it as brand new shoes. Wow. That was that was bad. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So obviously, Mark and Spencer rejected these goods for a reason. It has couple of defect, uh, and then after they dropped the, the order, they they reached out to other supplier to other potential clients, and they tried to to sell it to them. Luckily, we were there, and then we found something, you know, unusual. Mm -hmm. The inspector mm -hmm. pulled the logo, and then he found out. It's very interesting. What happens if you, let's say the product was fine, but you find, like, a few scratches and dents and things like that? Let's say 100 units out of 1,000 was defective like that. So you separate them, right? And then yeah. what happens with those, like, I trust the factory to not put them back in? Or, you know, like, how does that work? Well, you know, what we need to figure out, like if we are doing um, uh, uh, an acreal inspection, which is based on a sample size, like if, if there is a 3,000 pieces, we'll probably be inspecting 200 pieces. So out of the 200, if there is like 100 defective, it means that there is 50% defective. So it's not only about the 100, but there is 50%. So there is 1,500 pieces that is defective. So what we tell our client is, obviously, the defective that we found, we put it aside. Mostly, we put it in a carton boxes, and then we seal it with our, um, with our branded tape. Uh, but what he needs to figure out is he needs to rework or rediscuss with the factory to replace or to rework the whole production, not only focus on the two boxes of defective that we found. And then, uh, obviously, uh, most of the client will decide to reinspect after the factory will take probably one week or two weeks um, to rework. Um, and then they need to, to 
some of them, but very few will trust the factory to ship the goods straight away and then take the factory word, but that's not always the case. Um, and then we have to intervene and do a second inspection to make sure that they have replaced the, the goods. I normally do a full inspection, not a sample size. I realized uh, why I do that because I used to do just sample size and then the answer comes out like, okay, so 30% was defective. So now what do yeah. I have to do another inspection with the full inspection, separate the 30% that is defective. So it's like a double spend for me. So now instead of doing every time in inspection, I do like every two or three times randomize it. So they don't know when to expect the inspection or not. And I just do the full inspection at that time. And once I trust okay. the manufacturer, I just do it like you know, once in three times. Exactly. Well, that's what uh, that the point is. Well, the ideal scenario will definitely be to inspect 100%. But sometimes in terms of cost, you know, uh, we, it's, uh, it does not make sense. What about uh, with you guys? How much does it cost? Like full inspection and, and sample? Well, full thousand inspection, units. thousand unit depends on the product. Uh, like uh, for sure. Some, Shoes probably will take two mandates, will, two, will probably take two days to complete. Depends on the complexity of the shoes. Um, uh, so yeah, it'll probably take two days. And what does that mean in terms of cost? <sighs> the, well, the cost varies, depends on uh, the volume. So uh, the, the, uh, the price we have uh, for, uh, for um, like for example, for China's public price is 240, but for regular clients, there are discounts. So 240, that's for one day of work or for the whole full inspection one of one, one day? That one means day. 480 for 1,000 units too. What about, the sam what about the sample size? If I just check 100 units, what about that? It will still cost us one day because it's one inspector who will go to the factory for, for most likely a full day. Because we'll be checking all the quantities there, the labeling, taking the pictures, making the report, and, then, and, and et cetera. Um, okay, so, so I guess my okay. decision will depend on how many units I have. Like if I'm selling 10,000 units shipping, you know, then I guess it doesn't make sense to keep you there for 10 days or 20 days. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we don't we don't recommend that. And also, I, I, I never recommend the client, like obviously, the, I, as I said, the ideal scenario will be inspecting always 100%, but it doesn't make sense uh, to do that all the time when the, the quantities are high. Um, so in that occasion, if you have been working with the manufacturer for a long time, you probably do a sample, sample size inspection. Uh, but if it's your first time and then you don't know the supplier very well, then it's, um, it's uh, let not, not take the risk for the first shipment and then do a full inspection. Okay. So uh, usually manufacturers are scared of the inspector or like they try to be friends or like how, how is that dynamic working out there usually? Well, uh, in, in the QC or the, you know, the, the inspection industry, we have to be very careful uh, we, in terms of the inspectors we hire. Um, for the company of our size, um, we, we, we are like a big family. All the inspectors you know, uh, knows the management. It's, it's a very close relationship. It's human relationship that we have with, uh, with our inspectors. We don't just hire around and you know and work with people that we don't know so we have been in a close partnership with all our inspectors and it doesn't stop here uh, although the recruitment is the key factor like if you hire um, and uh, someone with uh, i would say compromised integrity Although you will do all the monitoring and the controlling, it still doesn't, it does not work. So that's why we are very careful with the inspector that we hire. However, we understand that the incentive is a key factor for, 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 to keep people motivated to work with you, no matter uh, what are the circumstances. Because we should not forget that behind every inspect, inspection, uh, there is a container of probably 10,000 pieces, a couple thousand US dollars. And the bad factories will, will, you know, to ship that in container, they will try by all means, legal and illegal means. And so that why, you know, uh, the, the recruitment is a key factor, uh, keeping close relationship with the inspectors, human uh, values that we, uh, that we uh, you know, try to uh, 
um, in store in our company. Uh, and as I said, the other factor is the incentive. Our inspectors are paid around 15% higher than the market. So uh, that's, that's a motivation. So they know it's very important to keep their job working for data inspection. Otherwise, they can find a similar opportunity. From the other, from the other thing, this 15% is not paid in salary or it's not paid in fixed salary, it's paid in bonuses. And these bonuses are paid every semester, every six months. So 15% of their salary is accumulated for six months. It's roughly around 90%. So one month salary, they can get one month extra salary every semester. And that's, uh, we look at his record for six months. And why it's six months? It's the time to see whether he got a complaint, whether he got uh, anything, you know, feedback from the client because the, there is a transit time for the container, for the shipments. If everything goes, you know, perfect, there is no complaints, he done, has done his job properly, he will get his one month salary. And in the year time, so he got two extra salaries and one, um, one extra bonus paid in Chinese New Year as for other companies. So that's how we manage to incentivize our inspectors. So they, they know that if, they, did, if they, they do something wrong, they will lose, you know, it's a not, not small thing to lose. It's a three, three month of bonus worth every year. Hmm. This is great. And obviously there are, there are other issue. factors. We are, we, are, we are a digital company. Um, most of like managers, leaders, and uh, you know, we, we believe in data and the big data. So we have a system that analyzes um, and track all the, all the data from the inspectors. Like we can, um, we can, for example, for this factory, like factory A, we can see like, what, are, what are their rejection rates. Like, like out of 10 visits, how many, uh, um, how many reports comes with the failed results. Like, and then we track, like if the inspector one go to factory A, his rejection rate is 80%. And the other one, when he visits, it's only 10%. So there is something wrong. Hmm, and then okay. we track all these data and then it's, it's a good tool for us to, on, in terms of daily uh, management of the inspectors. Very nice way to track it. I like that. Yeah, well, you know, we can talk about it. It's, it's our, you know, that's why we exist because it's a, it's a full-time job. You know, it's, a, it's not something, you know, it's not, we, we, just, we don't just get your requirement and then we send it to the inspectors. Uh, there is a real added value. We have a technical supervisor in the back office who will study it. Although, for example, some clients will say, well, I'm just interested to check, you know, to check the, check the dimensions. But we never stop there. We tell him, you know, for these products, you should, to, to comply with uh, quality and also the regulatory requirement, that what we need, you need to check. And most of them are surprised because they didn't know. And I told him, okay, so this checklist has to be checked. And then, you know, we go um, and, and make a full inspection, not just a short inspection. Hmm, very interesting. So I was looking again at this report here that is an example from your inspection there. So basically you put these red arrows for whatever you find, right? There's all kinds of yes. defects. It's very yes. interesting then to later watch your own product, seeing how it's doing. Uh, okay, and then you list all of the different types of defects, how many you found, right? And what's yeah. the min and mage? So that's... And so critical major minor defects so we classify it per severity and as you can see for example you might have like three signs in 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 one order so is you as you can see in the defect section we will we will classify you know we will break down per sign it's very important because sometimes when you see oh i have 10 percent defective in my production but what you don't see this 10 percent is coming from one time so you can tell your manufacturer, I approve to ship two styles, but the, you should take out the style number uh, one, two, three, for example. So we, we break it down to give you like full visibility on what is wrong, which styles, and then we put the arrows so you can have a better understanding. 
Okay, very, very nice. Um, okay, so you just list all of them. Uh -huh. So these are now different, a uh, different style you check, different exactly. style of shoes. Uh -huh. yeah. And then for every style, there were certain defects and then the summaries. So yeah. what's the quantity conformity? So, so you, you, you are, for example, this client ordered 9,231 shoes. And then the found, what we found is 8,000 only, 8,248. Hmm. So we count all the cartons and then do the math and see whether it's conform or, uh, you know, there are still missing production. Because what I happened mean, in... Yeah, I know in Amazon, Amazon really doesn't like when you make mistakes on the count. So it's, mm -hmm. they call it discrepancies and then they sort of penalize you for uh, do constantly repeating the wrong numbers. I yeah, know. so it's it's great that you count everything. But other yeah, things... Yeah, we count everything for packed. two reasons. For two reasons. The reason number one, to make sure that all your products are there. They, are, they aren't like, you won't ship like 100 pieces less from your order. The other reason, which is far more common, is what the factory, you know, they have a lot of tricks to trick everyone. Uh, luckily, not all the factories are like that, but what they will do, they know, like for example, they have 10% defective, so they will hide it. They will hide it somewhere. <laughs> and then it will show you the perfect 90%. So you do your inspection, and unfortunately, the unprofessional some other unprofessional you know inspection companies will just inspect what is there and then don't care about how how many pieces are in total so they will just show you the 90 percent that is perfect and then you do the inspection the report looks very nice and then you ship but actually 10 percent of the effective they, they just separated in a separate area mm. and that probably was the case for, for this for this inspection Oh, that's pretty uh, fishy, you know, how, how yeah, we can yeah. go and around all that. It's, it's unfortunately very common. Hmm. Okay, so once you list all of these different types, uh, yeah. and then, wow, that's like, how many pages is that? This is very, very in-depth. Look, at there's some different products as well. So this is a different report? Um. I'm not sure which report you have here. Yeah, this all one PDF. I guess this was one um, example. That's why. Okay, we, we have probably combined a couple of reports uh, and send it to you. I'm not, I'm okay. not, I'm not, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Um, what about this um, measure? You also measure, right? But the, usually the cartons Correct. are not ready yet by the time inspection comes. I mean, the actual cartons are not closed because you have to open and check each of them, right? So how do you get a carton? Well, it depends on the requirement um, of the client, but most of the time we arrive at the factory when everything is, you know, what we call the pre-shipment inspection or the final inspection uh, is when when 100% is produced, 80% packed, mm -hmm. at least, minimum. Mm -hmm. So why is that is we want to make sure that, uh, because we can't guarantee if the, if the cartons are closed, sealed, we can't guarantee whether this is just like a setup. Mm -hmm. And uh, after we go, everything will change again. So it's, um, we prefer, you know, we always recommend for our uh, client that to do this inspection when everything is back, everything is produced. So our inspector will just go to the storage area and randomly, pick uh, the cartons himself and then open it. This is like the best guarantee to, uh, to make sure, you know, what they will ship is what has been inspected. Okay. I see there's also negative observations. So you would notice that glasses of windows were broken, like water was found on the floor, dirty or something. Wow. That, that's actually very important to, uh, you know, to take notes because for example, when the glasses of the factory are broken and the, uh, the factory is humid and wet. What will happen is it's, um, there are so, you know, there are plenty of germs and mold that can catch your production. Right. And, uh, if, if it's like that, although, although at the time of the inspection, because the product are still fresh, looks nice, but the mold can spread very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if we see any mold, any dirt, or uh, anything that uh, can be of a concern, we will put in the reports. 
there's an interesting one. The products were not manufactured in this factory. Products and lines were not found. <laughs> yeah. This happens like that too? Trading companies? Well, uh, I would say probably five to 10% where mm. we, we uh, you know, what happened is when the, the client visit the factory, we will show him what we call the showroom factory. The, it has like two production lines, it looks, you know, out of this world. You know, it's uh, clean and beautiful. But what, where, where we go, we found this good cannot be manufactured here. Our inspectors are professional of their field and then they will understand quickly that, you know, to manufacture these goods, you need these, these, these machines and it's not there. Mm -hmm. So the goods has been sub subcontracted somewhere. That's very good. You guys yeah. are doing a very, a very good job. I really love it. <laughs> yeah, we, are, we try to be, you know, uh, we are all from a technical background um, and, and we love what we are doing. So we try to bring like, a, you know, the, we try to go to the extra mile of, uh, of doing the job. Not just popping up to a factory, taking a couple of pictures and say, well, you are good to ship. Yeah, because I guess I imagine a person who's running an inspection company should be himself or maybe the team should be very mm, the type of people who like the detail oriented work, who are, you know, they always attention to detail and they, they are themselves tidy and that kind of thing. So it's really nice to see that you care about those details. And you actually, yeah, as I said, you know, we are from top to bottom, we are all uh, technical guys. I myself, uh, textile engineer. And that's one of the reasons, like 45 or yeah, 45 of our businesses uh, for, for textile. So we love like touching the product and going to factories um, and, 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 you know, uh, avoiding disasters sometimes for <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the reward us the most. Great. Well, Mohammed, if people want to reach out to you, how can they do that? Very quick, very easy. You know, they can, uh, visit our website www.detroitinspection.com and then uh, they can yeah so they can go to the contact so there is on the first page there is an, a phone number and an email address info at detroitinspection.com or simply go to contact us and then from there they can fill um, the form and then and let us know what they want. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming to my show. Thanks for telling thank a little bit more much. details. I love the details, you know, that you actually sometimes find the factories that are not factories. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it happens a lot. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Okay.